here we go with a splash course then. We've got the main man Terry here, we've got Derek and we've got Eric and they're going to start getting this up to damp and then we can start the superstructure. So let's have a little look and see how we're going to do this. So this is the brick type here, it's been approved. So these are the ones uh, that have got quite big perps. We do use them on a couple of developments. So we've loaded everything out, uh, ready for Terry today. Got some squints here for the bay window, which have been made for us. So everything's ready to go. So Terry's got a datum over in the corner over there by the fence. This is the lowest corner here where Derek is. So we need to be 225 above the beam because we've got 150 of insulation, 75 mm screen. So we're going to be 225 above this beam and then we use the laser level to transfer it to all the other levels. So Terry, for instance, might be 235 above the beam, but at least we've got a minimum of the 150 and the 75 mm of floor screen. You don't want to be any lower than that. This is why you do the brickwork first. So you can set your air bricks in position and make sure they all work bricks and you haven't got any little pieces and cream closures either side and you can make sure it's all nice. Plus, once you've got the inside skin, the outside skin up, it makes it a lot easier to just string the line across the, the, the brickwork, form, set the cavity width and then run the block work in. So it works a block on top of the beam, obviously 225. So the garage down, they're starting the garage down that end and then they chase it round um, and set it all out. We've got some bit of work to do on the bay window, but it should uh, go swimmingly. And then we're going to carry on with the superstructure, basically. So we've got our forklift here. My dad, which is the uh, legend that features on the channel, drove that forklift from our yard to here. It's all road legal. It's all got number plates and indicators, all perfectly legal. But he drove that here this morning, so thank you, Dad. Um, we're ready to rock and roll. Got some more cement being delivered today. And let's see how these boys, boys get on. I'll check in with them later on. But um, Derek's on the garage pier. Derek can do the bay window. I'll show you his bay windows. Absolutely just phenomenal what he does with them. So, yeah, here we go. Garage pier being set. All systems go. And uh, when I asked on Facebook, when, well actually when I asked on YouTube who did they think was going to build my house, it was unequivocally Terry. You're number one Terry. That's it. So the pressure is on now. Derek's bought some new tools just solely for this job. So we'll check that in later on. So I'll catch you guys in a bit. Let's get this GoPro on the go.
two of the splash course build and it's Friday the 7th of July. It's 11.52. Terry's second day here, so let's see how he's been getting on, shall we? Got the big cheese come in to check on things. So brickwork's almost complete. Uh, just this little bit to go in here. Derek's on the other garage pier. Bay window, we use a couple of squints short, so I've dropped them off and we can complete that. But it's Derek's work. He's good at the old bay windows, as you can see. Cut the three quarters in there, but you can't odds it. So once the brickwork is finished, we can then set the cavity width, string a line across, run the internal block work, concrete block, and then it switches to thermalites on the outside. And then we've loaded out, the, well, Terry's loaded out the blocks along with Eric and Derek for the garage. So it's gonna be a nine inch skin, as I said, um, on the garage. So no cavity required on the garage. I just want it solid because I'll probably use it as a cinema room or something at some point. So all the splits are put in underneath the blocks now, put the block down, then we're gonna slurry the edge, the last course of blocks, slurry the bits in the middle, and then we can set out the concrete block and the firm light on top of it. Big old pier, it's gotta take um, quite a big steel across there. And obviously it's attic trusses, well not obviously, it is attic trusses because my ensuite bathroom is in the, in the room above the garage uh, to save me room in my bedroom. Looking good Terry, keep up the good work mate. Spot on. Vents going in. It's almost like we've done this before, isn't it? for far too long And now you're gone Took me away from all of my fears Kept me as well now so let's have a little look and see how the boys have got on so two days which i think is fantastic going so as you can see the splash course is all round now all the brickwork's done um the bay wind is now complete had a couple of bits missing on that all the air bricks are installed so now the block's been put around the perimeter and terry and the boys have even slurried the last you know block we left off for the splits so a couple of nice big piers on the garage i was a bit worried about them because it's got to support some attic trusses but looking at that it's a big old lump of a pier which is good so as you'll see over here as previously mentioned i've made this a nine inch wall through here rather than poxy sort of garage piers dotted around uh, just made it a solid nine inch wall and then when i come to convert it i can batten it out and insulate it and make it into a habit of wall room so i've uh, been be feeding the blocks in travis have been kind enough to drop me the blocks as and when because they're supplying everything for here so they've just been dropping off a few bits and pieces as i know because it's super local to them so but all the brick works round so that's that block that's now been put in place there and then it's been slurried in as well so it's all nice and solid and all the air bricks are in position um, every two meters i think it specifies on the drawing so it looks really nice. Bricks are a great match for the area, I think. You know, you've got that sun on there, bit of red and orange in there. There's, look at me getting all bloody David Bellamy on you. But uh, I think they really suit the surroundings and the environment that we're in. So very happy with them. So it's a big old lump of a house now. Now you've got the uh, brickwork round. You start getting a shape and a feel for it. So I'll be able to get in here and see what the kitchen layout's gonna be like, because I want an island and a few bits and pieces. So this floor will stay like this now, because we've got underfloor heating going down. So this will just be left like this until the end. And then the insulation, the membrane will go in, insulation will go in, 
and then it'll be screeded right at the very end once the end floor heating's all complete and finished. So there's the kitchen, it's the pipe work there for the kitchen. The utility room at the front there, it's the bay window at the front. Um, the entrance is actually a little bit over here. The entrance is basically opposite the double garage, which kind of makes sense where the forklift is, and then we'll get a bit of land off the farmer uh, and have a bit more room. So Terry's still grafting, I don't know what's wrong with the man. So he's going for it. But yeah. Half half six on a Friday night. <laughs> quarter to seven, mate, it is. Half half six. So there we have it, almost up to damp. So Monday will see us finish off probably all the block work inside. And then Tuesday will be proper superstructure starting. Um, then we've got the joist booked, we'll get some scaffold up and we'll get it ready for um, the joist to go on. Right, so we're finally at Damp. It is Tuesday the 11th of July and it is 25 to 8 and I'm actually off on holiday today. So I thought I'd whiz up here and see Terry and the boys and just capture this element because everything is up to Damp now. All the internal walls are set, all the brickwork's around to Damp and we've actually started a superstructure on the garage. So I'm gonna run through uh, what we're doing, where everything's located, um, and then when I come back, we'll probably have a first lift round it, which is going to be a bit of a shame, not going to, not going to be able to capture that. But nonetheless, let's have a look at the damp level, the internal walls, uh, the layout of the house, and um, I'll give you the grand tour. Right, so here we go. Here is the front door. Left down so the screed will come in. So you come in your front door, stairs go on the right here, up this wall. Uh, this is going to be the utility room, so sink toilet that's the waste and stuff for the utility room this is the living room in here it's the bay window uh, and then we've got an opening here which I'm not sure about but I'll go through that with Terry here's the front door that uh, is the door into the living room and then this is the sort of open plan kitchen area so this is going to be I don't know like a snug area which is why I might lose this door into this living room I'm not sure I might put some sofas along this wall I put a floor layout up so you can see obviously this is the kitchen over here this section here um, and then the garage is set out so you will come through your kitchen and then this will lead into your utility room so it'll become a bit clearer when the actual internal walls are up so we've got high strength 7.3 newton thermalite blocks on the perimeters uh, just my preference it's actually being over newtoned and that's why we've decided to use the thermalite blocks around the bay because it's not load bearing um, in this section and they're high strength anyway but it just gives us a nice neat cleaner finish and it's just a better job and easier to cut so if you see the um, angle of the cuts this is Derek's work he's actually he's phenomenal he really is phenomenal on the um, bay windows so everything's set out now so once the walls get up always look smallest at this point ironically but once the walls start going up you get a feel for how big the plot is going to be so you start some brickwork on the garage we had some rain yesterday Hessians out I mean middle of July and it's peeing down uh, so let's have a look at some brickwork shall we it's the flanking It won't take them long now to whiz this in. Only being a two and one here. We switch the labourer and it's all systems go. So Terry's, well Terry's in charge anyway, but Terry's definitely in charge with me being going to Spain now. Ain't you Terry? Yeah, I, I haven't done my hair the day. <laughs> uh, me too mate. So Terry's project manager. Well he is project manager anyway. No, so he's got it all under control. Front door, look I'll be coming straight out of my front door. That's my view. But these laurel bushes, this, this opening should actually be over here. So the opening is opposite these garages. So I've got to try and somehow shift some of them laurels and put them and fill that gap in because I want to keep them. So what are they going to be? 15 foot tall, I reckon. Uh, one question that was asked of me on the previous video is why we use the block and beam floor. So there's a couple of reasons. One, it reduces the amount of earth you've got to take out because if you're doing a traditional floor, you've got to excavate it, you need 150 of stone to go in, you've got to be 
150 insulation, 150 of stone, so you've got to dig it all out 300, compact it all down. And it takes a little while, there's a lot of muck away to get rid of, whereas when you use a block and beam floor, you can leave the floor level, the ground level 200 mil down below the floor and it's just a lot easier, a lot quicker and a lot simpler. And then it can be done in any weather, and once it's on, you can walk on it straight away. So that's why we use a block and beam very quick apart from all the fiddly bits with the splits, the air bricks, the filling in the beams, the slurry, that's a downside to it. But on a whole it's a lot quicker, easier and cheaper than a traditional you know concrete poured oversight. So I'll leave Terry and the boys to it and then I'm shooting off to Spain for a few days and then I'll be back and I'll see how we're getting on and I'll update you then. I anticipate the first lift being round pretty much by the time I'm back. So uh, I'll see you in the next episode but we are now up to damp and that is complete superstructure.